Welcome to the Nikon Camera Introduction Video 2. Today, we will be going over a few extra functions that will help you efficiently operate and maintain your camera. The first topic discussed will be the menu panel. Notice the menu button displayed to the left. It is being selected and you will see different components that you can select. If you scroll upward, it has playback menu. Go down, shooting menu another custom setting menu, setup menu, retouch menu, and lastly, recent settings. We can scroll back up to the top. Now go back to the shooting menu and use the select keys to move to the right. Next, to move down to set picture control. Select the option. The camera is set in standard mode, which is what the majority of the class will be using, but we can also set the camera to monochrome mode which captures the images in black and white. Go back up and select standard. This will take you back to the shooting window. Use the select keys to move down and select image quality. The camera should be set in JPEG fine, but sometimes you can select the NEF raw file to capture raw information. Select OK to go back to the shooting menu. Now select image size. Notice there are three different settings, large, medium, and small. The camera should be set for the large image size. Select OK to go back to the main menu. Move down one and select the white balance option. Auto will mainly be used in this class, but sometimes if using fluorescent lighting, the fluorescent option will help create a better balance of white. Select OK and the color diagram is displayed to manually edit. Click OK one more time and it will take you back to the shooting menu. Before continuing, let's grasp a better understanding of why we set different white balances. Notice in this image, the child on the left has a normal complexion and the image to the right makes the child look yellowy. The white balance tells the camera what color temperature the light source is being shot at and can be adjusted to create more accurate image. For example, if you are standing in a room with fluorescent lighting, someone may have a greenish tint in their skin tone, whereas if the room is lit with incandescent lights, you may appear more yellow. The camera balances these settings to create a normalized picture, such as the example displayed on the left. White balance can also capture creativity. In this image, the sunset colors are rather dramatically different. This helps capture a different creative perspective of any image. Going back to the menu, select the ISO. Notice if you select OK again, you will be able to change the sensitivity settings. The larger the number, the more sensitive the camera is to the light, but the lower the number, the less sensitive the camera is to light. If you are outside and it's sunny, you should use an ISO between 100 and 300, but if you are inside, you should use an ISO value of 600 to 800. Let's look at this displayed example. Notice the difference between the two identical pictures shot with two different camera sensitivity settings. The image on the left allowed less light sensitivity, making the image appear smooth, whereas the image on the right was shot with a high ISO which allowed more sensitivity to light. In turn, the image has too much digital noise because the sensors are overly sensitive. The higher the ISO speed, the more digital noise signals are captured. This noise manifest is like tiny colored specks scattered all over the picture area. It is especially noticeable in the dark areas or shadow of the image. Now let's go back to the main menu panel and scroll to the setup menu. The symbol looks like a small wrench. Then select the right key and move to select format memory card. This area will allow you to delete all images on your camera. Please remember when you borrow a camera to save all data to your computer and delete all images before turning the camera back in. Now when you select the playback button, the camera displays that there are no images. Now let's discuss the information panel to understand a quick and easy way to access basic information with your camera. 
Select the lowercase i located at the bottom left of your camera. The info panel is now displayed and the select keys can navigate to different settings. The highlighted selection is where the exposure compensation is displayed. If we select OK, the exposure compensation is displayed on the screen. Notice the different effects as the numbers increase and decrease. The basic setting should be set at zero. Then select OK. This will take you back to the main info panel. Now move to the left and we will select the flash compensation. Notice as the numbers increase and decrease, the flash compensation is either lightened or darkened. The basic setting should be set at zero. Then select OK to go back to the main menu. Now let's scroll up to the ISO selection and click OK. Notice that you can now quickly select a different ISO setting. This is a helpful shortcut while using your camera. Notice that the displayed images to the left give examples of situations when to use certain ISO settings. Now select OK and go back to the Info panel. Now move up one selection and click OK to select the white balance. Notice the different settings as you scroll up and down. Scroll back to the basic auto setting and select OK. Now move up one step and select the image size. Here you can quickly select the image size you prefer to use. Select OK to go back to the info panel. Move up one to the last info panel selection and click OK on the image quality. Here you can change your settings for the quality of the image you are capturing. Typically JPEG Fine will be the primary selection in this class. Now select OK to go back to the info panel. Hit the shutter release button once to go back to the main camera display. Next we will be discussing the main programming key points. After watching the first Nikon video, you should have a better grasp of utilizing different programs on your camera. Let's look at this chart to help better understand the different camera program modes. When using the program auto mode, the shutter speed and aperture are both selected by the camera automatically. The shutter speed priority mode allows for the photographer or yourself to set the shutter speed whereas the aperture is automatically selected by the camera. When using the aperture priority mode, the photographer or yourself sets the aperture and the shutter speed is determined by the camera. When using manual mode, both the shutter speed and aperture are set by the photographer. It is important to know which variable needs to be independently or dependently set when capturing your images. It is important to discuss proper care for your camera. The lens cap needs to be properly placed in the front of the camera to protect the camera lens. Notice the camera can still zoom with the lens cap securely in place. Any damage to your lens could result in decreasing the overall quality of your images. It is also important to have lens tissue on hand when working with your camera. Any dust or dirt residue can adhere to the lens and it is important to have the correct tissue or the lens could become scratched with certain materials. This brings the second basic introduction video to an end. My name is Hannah Cavanis and I would like to thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos.